Hi guys, it's um, it's Bijou Phillips Divorce Day. That was just dropped about an hour ago or two by, um, is it Yashir Ali? Um, but I, I saw it on my Instagram from Lee Remini. Um, I'm, I don't even understand, how, like I get the messages when she posts things on her uh, channel or whatever, I don't even know. Like things are, are technology is advancing so quickly that I can't even keep up. Um, but I wanted to lend my voice to the SPTV, I guess, today. Um, my name is Christina. I live in Southern California. Um, I've been through several iterations of uh, uh, ab abusive relationships. I've been on the receiving end of that. And so I like to speak out. Well, I don't like, I don't enjoy it. I don't, I, I wish I didn't have to um, talk about narcissism and, and this kind of thing, um, manipulation, m massive, whatever. My words are not coming very easily today, but whatever. Um, pretty sure I took on my medication. I didn't yesterday and I was not able to express myself very well. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm a photographer, and um, I'm a cis, gender, female, whatever, um, ally, supporter of everybody uh, who <laughs> chooses to be the best they can be. Um, my goals in life are to uh, live with integrity and courage um, and honor the people and ideas that I admire and love and appreciate. And um, so that's why I'm here. I have a really hard time recording myself, <laughs> um, but I'm trying to learn because like, why not, right? right? Um, if I can help anybody, then it's worth whatever stress it is trying to figure out StreamYard. Um, and it's going to take practice, like everything. That's the probably the biggest lesson that I've learned in my recovery from trauma is that it takes time and that I'm not in control of it all. Um, it keeps, okay. And like I said before, it's mosquito season. I don't know li literally how else to get rid of them. I've bought in like five different ways, but they're still fucking here and making me crazy. Um, so if I freak out, that's why, because there's flies and mosquitoes. Um, okay, so Bijou is dropping Danny Masterton. Bijou Phillips is related to China Phillips, who I think did that one song that Willem, the drag queen, redid about Chick-fil-A. It came out when I was in high school, probably 89. Um, anyway, the family, the uh, kids of some of the mamas and the papas, Mackenzie Phillips, China Phillips, and Bijou Phillips, right? I don't know if there's more. Those are the ones that come to me right now. And Bijou, I don't know who got into Scientology first or whatever, grandma maybe, I don't know. But um, so Bijou married Danny Masterson and went to all the every day of the trials, the two trials. And you know, what was interesting to me is when people reported about um, when the verdict was read, when the uh, judge read the verdict that, that Bijou like, couldn't control herself. And I just thought, wow, how, I mean, obviously, you know, it's going to mess up her whole life and they're, they have a daughter and it's, you know, all that, but like all the, all the thing, all the, everything that was told before then, like all the stuff that he's done, like that didn't surprise her. That didn't shock her. That didn't make her gasp. But the fact that he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison did, I don't know, that's just weird to me. Because um, when you hear and you learn about what the Jane Doe's endured um, by his hand, uh, it's quite disturbing. It's it's disturbing It's and it's triggering for, for those of us that have been ard. 
for those of us that have been in relationships with people that are completely using us and we are completely oblivious to it. Um, that's what I was thinking. Like, okay, so I was in a relationship eight years ago, it ended, right? Um, with this individual and his son kept calling, when we were together, his son kept calling him a narcissist and I'm, I didn't know what that meant. So um, after I kicked him out, I did what most of us do. Can you see the apparatus in my hair? Um, and I did a lot of studying. Uh, I It was about two weeks that I barely ate or slept and I just watched videos on narcissism and personality disorders because I did not understand what the heck just happened. Like I really, I didn't understand. Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't understand that there were people like that out there. So that's why I share my story because if I can explain it to somebody in a way that they can understand, then they can protect themselves from it. Whether it's, you know, it, happening now or they, you know, they can see the red flags. And so, you know, cause I don't, contrary to what these manipulative people may have thought, sorry, um, I didn't enjoy that. I didn't want to be taken advantage of. I didn't want to be used. And I didn't think that that, I didn't think a person could do that. Um, but unfortunately, I have learned the hard way that they can and they do and they will and they continue to. Um, so that having been said, um, I have a real soft spot for particularly women just because, well, I, I guess I just, I know of more women that have endured abuse than men, but I do know men that have uh, been abused as well. Um, and whatever, what does gender matter anyway? But keep in mind, I'm from the 80s, I am Gen X, and a lot of my thoughts uh, take a little while to catch up. Um, now we're called allies. Before we had a different, different moniker, two words that rhymed with each other, but I think that it would offend some people, so I won't say it, but I plan to get a tattoo in honor of one of my um, beloved angels that has passed that was on the LGBTQIA spectrum. Um, all right, so the problem we have today is that there are children locked up, tortured, raped, enslaved in the name of a religion. I know that there's more religions or, you know, groups and people. I know that there's abuse on a grand scale. But the exciting thing today is that because Mila and, and, and what's his name? K K K Mila, Kuna, Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, because they fucked up so royally, everyone's paying attention. Um, they their words and their actions contradicted each other. Uh, I don't know them, but the stuff that I can see that's on the internets in the world, um, it's shocking. It's shocking how ironic it is that they led a company that was supposed to help children. Meanwhile, knowing damn good and well what Danny was doing to people and what was going on in the Scientology hotels. Um, it scares me. It scares me that there are people like that out there. Like, you know, in the morning, they kiss their wives goodbye. And then the afternoon, they abuse children. And then in the evening, they pick up their paycheck. Like, you know, it's just a lot. It's a lot for me to deal with. So sometimes I can't even watch all, all of the news, all the Scientology news and all the SPTV because there's, it's so real and it's so scary. It's so damaging. It's, it's like beyond whatever words I have. 
um, to to talk about. I mean, this is really happening right right now. There's kids locked in rooms being abused under the guise of religion. Our tax money goes to fund this, and it's not okay for one more second. It is not okay. So, getting all riled up and um, sharing a little bit with with y'all. So my experience was, uh, I was born into, I was trying to think of what, what images were behind me. I could share some with you, but I don't know if I want to do that. Um, I was born into an environment where there was a lot of drugs and alcohol and <clears throat> mental abuse or mental illness. And so all of the results of that were me thinking that that's how everybody was and trying to save everybody from the drama and trauma and pain and misery, right? And I'm the youngest of six girls. All my sisters are half-sisters. And I'm a lot younger than they are. So uh, they all left the house pretty early. And I was um, still there with both of my parents. And my dad was not home a lot. He was like, let's just say half the year he was home, half the year he was out on the road. And so I grew up with my mom. It was my mom and I, and she was just everything to me. You know, she was this beautiful, intelligent, capable, creative woman, beautiful. And she, but she allowed herself to be abused, right? By my dad. And I couldn't do anything about it. And she told me it was my fault. So there you go. So now here, go have a life now after this, after I've crumpled you up. Not because they were intentionally hurting me, but that was the best they could do. And it fucked me up. It fucked up our whole family, if you ask me, but you know, whatever. Um, so as a teenager, I chose people to love that used me and abused me and didn't respect me at all. So I wasn't used to being respected. I didn't have self-respect. Um, so I just came, kept going and going and going. I've had a couple people in my life that actually love me for who I am. And that's different. You know, um, but I've been in, I'd say in recovery, well, in consistent recovery in a, a group that I attend uh, on a regular basis. Um, it'll be four years in November. I've been healing from specifically narcissistic abuse uh, since 2015. That's when I kicked him out and it's 2023 now. So I think that's eight years. I don't know. I, You do the math. Um, But uh, healing, okay, so whatever. I picked a bunch of people to abuse me, right? So now I'm in my 50s. Well, actually, I was in my 40s then. Um, well, yeah. And I had to start, I had to understand what had just happened to me when I kicked that guy out. Because he was accusing me of something that wasn't true, which now I know is gaslighting. But at the time, I was so confused. I'm like, what is going on. Um, so I, you know, oh, I think I'm repeating myself now, but I, I, you know, I spent a couple weeks just glued to YouTube, learning everything I could from everybody uh, that I could from every angle about um, personality disorders and what the people with different ones, how they act and what they do. And I was able to and, and can recognize a lot of um, these traits and a lot of the people that I allowed to be close to me. Um, and it's, it's hard because it's not just, oh yeah, you know, all 
X, Y, Z, you know, are, are bad people. It's not, it's not like that. Um, but that's all I knew. All I knew was, was abuse, right? And so these people that I considered my friends, um, I was kind of a buzzkill because I tried to, like I said, try to save everybody. Okay, these mosquitoes might just be the end of me. Um, I need to get one of those rackets that get some. Um, like I said, I wasn't respected and I was, I was like, oh, I said I was the buzzkill because I was trying to save everybody from all their addictions, right? Like I can, first of all, and like, like they want me to, second of all. Um, but I realized that's, you know, like drug addicts and alcoholics try to control life by using substances or try to um, get through life a little easier by, you know, using substances or whatever. For me, I, I use people. I try to control the people that I love. That's how I have functioned. I, you know, I learned this about myself now. Um, this is my part. So yes, I was abused. Yes, that should never have happened ever, but it did. So as, as, as a kid, I had no choice. As a young person, still I had no choice. Um, you know, and as you keep choosing to, to uh, be around people that hurt you, it just gets worse and worse. So when people say, um, well, I, I, you know, how do people fall for that? How, how do people fall for a cult? That's the most annoying thing to me next to people calling everyone a narcissist that they don't like. Like, I hate that. Um, narcissistic personality disorder is a very specific thing. And I'm not a doctor, but I, I, I think I understand enough about it to be able to spot it now. Um, and avoid it. And, it. and it sucks having to break, uh, for me, I'll speak for myself, it, it, it is, continues to be hard to set those boundaries and, um, and end those relationships with people that I love. And, and not because I don't love them, but because they're destructive. And interacting with them brings me nothing but turmoil. Um, and I don't, sorry, I don't know if you heard that ding. So anyway, I don't want to live that way anymore. So um, I, I, I don't choose that. The people that are around me now actually care what I have to say and actually respect me. And it's so weird because I, I never understood why, why it wasn't always like that. Like, the truth, obviously, grounded in truth, gray rock. It's the truth is the most important thing to me, and it, and it's not like that for other people. Um, that's that's one little thing I can explain to you. Oh, that's here's 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 just what I'll talk about, and I'll end with this. Um, I think, okay, people like Danny, people that are that hurt others without any empathy. Um, they're, they, they're not like you and me. They like, okay, so what I'm trying to say is Danny Masterson is going to be, uh, or is um, in discomfort and, you know, probably will drop his body at some point or ha someone will drop his body for him. Um, but it's not like if if I was to go to prison, I couldn't handle it, period. I couldn't handle it, uh, one part of it. And for, for him, uh, they don't really care. Like, I don't think Danny Masterson really care. I mean, there's not like good and bad and truth and, and lies. It's just all one thing to them. And... It's just like, whatever, you know, if he gets his ass kicked, it's the same as him raping somebody, probably. It's not like there's a big difference. It just is what it is. They don't have personality. They don't have identity. They don't have a sense of self at all. Um, and they, they think everybody's like them. When I heard that, I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I see now how this particular guy, um, this last 
one, the, the narcissist, um, and I saw his paperwork, so I'm not just pulling that word out of my ass. I, yeah, it's a very thick, um, the test that he took, that they take in the psych test. Um, a lot of, he's got a lot wrong, a lot destructive, however you want to put it. Anyway. What was I going to say? Oh, oh, I realized um, that he was just using me for for to try to fill his soul, kind of, if that makes sense, uh, because I'm loving and caring and I do care and I like things really matter to me, um, especially the truth. And I just assumed if I presented that to people, they would feel the same way I did about it, about the truth. And they do not. There's not a lot of people that have the courage to face what it takes uh, to recover. Like the truth of that person in my family did not love me. That, you know, and and this guy was literally screwing everybody to having drug orgies behind my back and everyone else knew. And I did like, it's so extreme that when you, try to explain it to people who haven't experienced it, it's awfully uh, re-traumatizing because they just think, oh, you just had a bad breakup or this. And like, no, you need to understand, like, these are the people that are in jail when they get caught. These are the people that do these extremely destructive things to people. That's who they, they are. These are those people. And, and I let them in my life and in my bed and in my heart. And now, uh, I, I have to, and I don't have to do anything, but I choose to see what the reality is. I'm, I'm not responsible for, I don't know, for me, in a way, I, I have been so self-destructive self that I have not consciously, but definitely unconsciously chosen these particular men to hurt me in different ways because I didn't think I was worth more than that. Right. And, and, and knowing all this and not, I'm not stupid, uh, but I have this, had this blind spot for people who, you know, we try to mend people's broken wings and uh, we think that that's what we're doing, but what we're really doing is putting ourselves in the position to be hurt because these people, it, reality is different for them. It's like really reality or like life is just a stage and and um, they see us through this really distorted lens. And I saw them through a distorted lens. I uh, fully acknowledge the fact that my um, my thinking is distorted. Um, my diagnosis is severe depression and anxiety. I'm on. I don't know, three or four different psych meds. And I hate it, but I don't have a choice. The uh, alternative is dropping my body, and I can't do that. I have responsibilities to people that I love. Um, and if life can, can feel different than what I know, I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep coming back, and I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep trying to give myself grace and patience. I can't do love yet. I can't <laughs> do that. But I can allow other people that, that do love and respect me to love and respect me. And that's new. Um, I'm single. I have no interest in a relationship because I have to work all this stuff out. I know that if I don't, the next person I choose will be the same person with a different face. I know that. <laughs> I've been paying attention, obsessively paying attention um, for as long as I can remember to my choices and my motivations. Um, and I thought that just understanding was enough, but it's not. There's this whole other part that I have to let other people in. I have to choose people <laughs> that are on the same path as I am of trying to be the best that they can be 
and um, learn how to interact uh, with love and kindness and patience and all these things. Basically, you know, the codependent story gave people everything that I needed for myself, period. It's that simple. Um, so I'm learning how to do that. And it's not easy at all. Um, I think I said earlier that I'm, I'm in a, a program that I've been in about four years and I've had some massively, some massive gains. If you, I think that's one of the, the Scientology terms. I was never in Scientology. It's just all the same to me. All this abuse is the same to me. So I talk about it. Um, the way I can. And right now there's a lot of eyes and ears on Scientology. So that's why I'm putting this video out now. Um, I want to be able to help people not go through what I went through and, and what some of the people that I have loved have gone through. And I want to give people hope who are in or out of a relationship like that and they still don't know what to do. Um, I just want you to know that it's possible to heal. I'm in the process of healing every day. It's another day of, of choosing, choosing to do things that make sense, choosing to do things that are in alignment with my morals and my standards and my ethics and not letting people, you know, just slide under the radar so they can stab me in my back when I'm not paying attention. Uh, so I just, I've been really focused on myself this past year. And I'd say, you know, I've, I've grown up a lot and that's what I need. I need all that stuff I was looking for in that relationship. I need to either figure out how to provide it for myself or allow people that I can trust trust myself, trust other, these people, th these, you know, the people that, the friends that I, my new friends that I've chosen. I say new friends because I live in the same town I grew up in. So I have a lot of the same friends that I had when I was a kid. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I'm in Southern California and I'm in between the gold base, the secret Scientology international, whatever, int base uh, in San Jacinto, California and um, the Twin, I'm pointing north, the Twin Peaks place where Shelly is. Uh, it's, they're about the same distance for me. Um, and I've done some drive-bys if you want to look at my other videos. I don't know if it's that interesting. You can't really see much from the street. Oh, and I've done some walk walk-bys too, a couple of those. Oh, speaking of which, here's Mike, mini Mike, bobblehead Mike. Um, there we go. I don't know why my computer's so dusty. The sun is hitting it and showing me how much how dusty it is. Um, okay, so yeah, that's all. I, I have hope. I know it can get better, um, but I can't. I can't. I can't bring Scientology down. I can't make Danny Masterson stop raping people. But the justice system, hopefully, you know, did the best it can do in a in a situation like that. Um, so the Jane Doe's are my heroes. Uh, everyone's speaking out against Scientology right now. It's it's really encouraging for me. I love how it feels. Um, I love listening. My favorite, I'm sorry to everybody else, but my favorite SP TV is um, Serge because like he literally has no room for anything but the truth when he speaks. And that is, I listen to it just because he's telling the truth. Like I don't even, like it's the same story, the same shit's going on and the same fucking politicians are allowing people to stay in Scientology <laughs> and they had earlier this week, I think it was maybe Monday or it was last week, the child trafficking summit help fucking committee commission, whatever. They had it in Clearwater, Florida. I'm sure 
just mere miles away from buildings that um, have ch children trapped in them. And then Mila and Ashton are like, we support all victims except for the ones that cost us all these millions of dollars because the Jane Joes spoke up and now they can't get their money from that 70s show and they can't get their money from the ranch or whatever. Um, it, it, the, the irony is, is, is astonishing to me. And I imagine if you are watching SPTV, it's similar for you. I love everybody. Um, save, save, save Bob Ferris. Where Shelley, um, save the children of Scientology. I don't have any answers, but I can lend my voice to this SPTV chorus um, when I can get my shit together enough to do that. Um, oh, here's something interesting, and I, I didn't know if I should bring it up or not, but I'm going to because it's weird. Um, the supporters of Leah Remini, the Aftermath, or something like that, that group in on Facebook, I can't access it now. So I don't know if I was kicked out or if they closed it down or what, but that's interesting to me. Um, maybe because Leah's going to court and she, she just doesn't want to make more stuff to have to deal with. I have no idea. I, I don't know. I, it, somebody may have done a video about it. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but I'll look into that. So just, I would like to ask you just to keep showing up, keep leading with love, keep, you know, if you pray or speak, you know, sound bowls or whatever you do with the, I believe in good energy. Uh, I believe in love. I believe in truth. And I believe that it will always come out. Uh, sometimes it might not be in our lifetime, but sometimes it is. Like when the, when the verdict was read for Danny Masterson, that was a victory for everyone who has been in that situation. I, I guarantee everyone who, who, knows what that feels like to be overpowered, um, felt empowered in that moment, that the truth was, for whatever reason, the stars were in alignment, it was allowed to be heard and, and seen. And Danny won't be doing that to any other women. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds. I I don't know. It's 50-50 if he if he's going to keep <laughs> keep going or uh go go join uh, Elron on Galactica 5000 wherever they are. Um So just give yourself grace and patience and and keep showing up and do the best for yourself because your kids, if you have kids or you have other people that look up to you, um, they need to see you take care of yourself. And and I know how hard it is. I battle every single morning. I have to battle my depression and anxiety. And I get up and I suit up and I show up and I do the damn thing. And I have more hope now than I did before. So. I hope my blabbering um, has helped somebody somewhere. And and hi, Osa. Um, like and subscribe or whatever. Um, I know I, I suck at this because whatever I just do. Maybe I'll get better at it if I keep doing it. I don't know. But uh, my Instagram, which is what I started with, is grounded in truth, grounded period in period truth period. And uh, it's had a couple different names, but it's had that one for a few years. And I think that's the name of the YouTube as well. Um, and if you have any questions or, or comments or whatever, feel free to reach out. Um, I don't know if I don't even know how to do that. See, I suck at this. Um, I know I have an email address that is narc period abuse period recovery at gmail.com. So you can reach out to me there. Um, if with anything, anybody has any suggestions? Oh yeah. Okay. So this last thing, um, 
I mentioned on, I think one of Serge's lives that I, I would totally love to put together a, uh, like a, a luncheon or a brunch or get together for some ST, SPTV years or like just people just to fucking meet up and talk about all of it and, and, and tie up some of the resources of Scientology because you know that they'll be in the group acting like they're one of us and they'll be watching us from every tinted windowed car that they can. Um, I don't know. I think that would be fun. So let me know if you think that would be fun too. Uh, otherwise, I'll just I'll just keep coming up with stuff, and I I want to be able to figure out how to present stuff to you guys in a way that's useful to you, because um, I don't really know what that is. So I'm just I'm gonna get with my uh, source universe whatever, God, power, higher power, whatever, and um, figure some stuff out because I want to be useful. I don't, I don't want to just go through life and not help people, help children, help women, help men, help X, Y, Z, not to be abused or to get out if you are and to heal if you have been. So please keep coming back as I will. And um, peace to y'all. I'm trying to figure out StreamYard. That was my first live. Oh, wow. Look at the lighting has changed a lot since, since I started this. Okay. Let me back up. Okay. Ex escape and recording. All right. Um, I'll see you guys soon, or I'll just be talking to you soon. Okay. Bye. Okay.